Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Belmont Park for the September 16th episode of Trips and Traps. I'm Andy Serling, joined by Eric Donovan. And we are back at Belmont Park, but we have a lot of unfinished <laughs> business to attend to from up at Saratoga the uh, last week of the meet. We got some uh, highlights of horses that we want to show and uh, horses that we think uh, might be trips, might be traps. Yeah, it feels like we got a mixture of both of them here. And we were going to show some Belmont races, but we had enough Saratoga stuff. And with most of the rain that we had over the weekend, didn't come up with a lot for Belmont anyhow. Well, let's get to uh, one of those races upstate. We'll go back to September 2nd. This is race number five. We're taking a look at the two Royal Stocks and the three Chief Council. Royal Stocks, the first and Chief Council had run already once. Yeah, and this was a tough maiden race. It was actually won by a firster for Todd Fletcher. Royal Stocks, a first-time star for Stan Huff. Steady's out of the gate. Doesn't do much running. Just wanted to point him out. But Chief Council, the number three horse. This is a horse that had been heavily, heavily bet. A Billy Mott first-time star. It was actually favored over a Darley horse that won first time out named Liston. We showed on trips traps and I have to say in the little bit we've seen from that race I'm beginning to wonder if that race is not going to turn out to be kind of a phony race. Chief Counsel was even money in a very, very tough field here. Took an enormous amount of money, and he did get a little shuffled back early. But I'll tell you something. Even though this race is dominated in the front end, you've got Rain King sitting third here. I think Chief Counsel is starting to show after two races. He may just be one of those horses that always takes money, runs well, and doesn't win. Uh, I agree with you 100% here. I mean, this is a race that uh, he was supposed to be very, very tough in. Uh, the race that he comes out of, that he came out of, with Liston. He's right there in the outside highlighted there making his move. Uh, and we'll see Royal Stocks down toward the inside here as well. Uh, just getting maybe a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit tight there, turning it for home. But still, you know, a horse really doesn't have much of an excuse there. Um, but, uh, you know, as we were talking about before, the race that was won by Liston, Brother Bird, the uh, have to mind that bird in the race too. Everyone thought this was going to be a key race August 15th at Saratoga. Maybe it's not. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I never thought it was going to be a, I, I will never, ever, ever say that this race is going to be a key race. I will wait until they run back. But I did think it was a good field. The question is, is it one? And I, I agree. I, you know, Wayne King, at least he fought it out in the inside from that rail post. And even though he kind of clunked a little bit when he got to the outside of the end, what did Chief Counsel really do? Unless you are absolutely sure and right that this was a race where nobody was able to close, which may be the case. And in that case, I'm really interested in Royal Stocks the next time. Uh, I'm, gonna have that. I'm, I'm just about this close to having absolutely enough of Chief Counsel. The horse is running one, two, three, four early in that race, held on to run, you know, basically in the top five spots there. So uh, Chief Counsel was the only one that could kind of penetrate those uh, early front runners there. Uh, we'll take a look at another uh, maiden race at the spa. This one was for uh, Phillies. Uh, it's the uh, fifth race from September. September 3rd, we're looking at the three cast call on the floor, capitalism at risk. Yeah, it's interesting. We ran some maiden races at Saratoga, and both these horses break a little bit slowly. Now, we'll show you why capitalism at risk, who was the two-to-one favorite, broke slowly. Cast call, just a little bit sluggish early. A first-time star for Owen Hardy in the Darley Stable. You know, you watch all these maiden races at Saratoga, and, and one of the things you're looking for is, obviously, you're looking for nice horses for the future, but you're also looking for horses that had a little bit of trips or showed flashes that maybe down the road will be good horses. Now, I'm not sure about Cast Call. I think he might be okay, and we'll see as the race progresses. But he is the kind of horse a lot of people are going to land on because of the clothes he puts in here. Capitalism risk had his chances just completely eliminated, basically, the start. And here he is moving up three wide. Yeah, capitalism, capitalism at risk showed good early speed. First time out August 16th, definitely taken out of her game here as she uh, makes this a uh, wide uh, move around the turn. And uh, we'll see her highlighted uh, right there. And, you know, it's just a, a much different ball game to go from a horse that shows speed her first race and then second time out doesn't. And we see uh, also a uh, cast call down toward the inside there at the back of the pack. Uh, just about a uh, path off the rail there as well, and Cast Call will close uh, nicely in here. But, uh, you know, another race where uh, I think much like the last race we showed, uh, I'm not so sure about either one of these horses, to be honest with you. Maybe Capitalism at risk with that trouble at the start had a chance is compromised here, but uh, I don't know. There's not much oomph in the stretch here from Capitalism at risk. No, but Capitalism at risk is so taken out of his game in this race at the start that I do think you can give him an excuse. I didn't love him in this spot, and ultimately, I'm, I, I'm with you, I'm not sure how good this field was. The second horse, actually, ran extremely well being involved in the pace, and that was the song and a prayer horse for Jimmy Toner. And there's the start, though, you see what happens to Capitalism at risk, veering like that. You really can't see it at all in the pan, and it takes him so much out of his game. If you liked him last time, I would make an excuse for him and give him another chance. I'm not sure I really like him, but I think we can show that he didn't have a fair chance near, so maybe his form's a little dirtied up by a line that is not as bad as it looks. As far as cast call, I was impressed by the way he angled out and ran at the end. He'll probably want to go on and go longer. Of course, he'll also probably run, end up running on synthetic surfaces, so what's the difference? What he can do? Who knows? This race means absolutely nothing when he goes to the fake turf course. But he runs here at a mile. 
If he's not extremely over bet, I think he may be okay. You hear that unbelievable stat you unearthed up at Saratoga about the uh, offspring of AP Indy debuting. Uh, this race was five and a half furlongs up there, so certainly uh, those horses seem to be better off stretching out. Yes, I, I can't take credit for that stat. Somebody smarter than me gave it to me. But I agree, no AP Indy's ever won a race at six furlongs or less at Saratoga. Well, this was five and a half for this AP Indy. I think he'll be okay. Another uh, baby maiden race. We'll take a look at the... Uh Second race from September 5th, and the uh, big favorite in here was In Just We Trust, going off at 8-5. to five. A second-time starter from Todd Pletcher, and, uh, you know, having this inside, near inside post, uh, you know, gets tricky for horses like this. In Just We Trust doesn't break all that alertly here, and, and down inside, he's just going to get uh, bottled up pretty much uh, most of the way. Yeah, and as we'll show, we show the head-on. He gets kind of shut off at the start, and you really do have to watch the head-ons of these races. And this is a horse that, and we're going to show the head-on after this, it is absolutely uncomfortable being stuck down inside the entire running of this race. And I, I don't, his first race was, was good enough that he was favored in here and, and did rate to be kind of tough. On the other hand, I, 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 don't, I'm, I, I think he was supposed to, he's a good horse based in his first race, I'm trying to say. You see him staying along inside here. You're going to see him getting shuffled back there. Ultimately, when we show the head on, he'll, bo he'll bother a horse named Icebox who's outside of him. He's just never happy in here. Yeah, I think most of the trouble is, uh, you know, his own doing here, just being very green down inside there, getting, you know, losing a few spots there, uh, getting shuffled back to, well, not really even shuffled back, but just losing a few spots there, you know, losing a couple lengths and still having to be uh, down inside. Just when we show the head on, you'll see how extremely green he is and has some trouble there with some other horses, even there trying to get out, you know, off the turn there. So, uh, and just we trust a horse that I think, you know, probably better suited for Belmont. Wide the turns, maybe an outside post I think would definitely help, and just we trust inside post here at the spa going seven definitely didn't help him out. He, he was a, one of a number of Todd Fletcher horses, two-year-old maidens that ran well in their first starts that didn't run that well second time out. I make a big excuse for this horse, and it's also sort of a, a, a point for we talk about horses being jammed inside and being unhappy being jammed inside, and I think this horse is a very, very clear example of that. Now, this is not always true for all horses. And, of course, second-time stars, first-time stars, great education for them in reality. This race may help him unless, unless he comes out of this race sort of scared to race and he think, and, you know, had a bad experience this day. If he comes out of this race fine, he'll be a tougher horse perhaps for it. We'll see what happens down the road. But this is a horse at a short price that just had a massive excuse and really no chance the way the race was run. Now you see it down inside uh, right now. Uh, it actually looks okay in this spot here, but not going to be the case in another a few strides. Going to you know start to get a little bit green here, angle out a little bit there. Doesn't like being down inside there. Johnny Velasquez having a little bit of a tough time controlling and just we trust here. And, you know, second time out, you would expect this not to be the case. Even if a horse wasn't behind horses first time out, you'd expect it to be a little bit more professional in this. You know, bumping with another horse uh, outside there and, and just, uh, you know, that, that uh, definitely, you know, hurt him there. And uh, I don't know where to go with this horse, Andy, because he was such a short price in this race. Everyone's going to see this trouble. He's going to be a short price in the next race. If he doesn't put stuff together mentally, I don't know how good a bet he'll be. Well, I'm not sure everyone's going to see how much trouble he had here. And Icebox really takes a lot of abuse from him during the running of this race, to be honest. Uh, I don't remember if there was an inquiry looking at it or not. There may well have been. I, I hear what you're saying. It, it depends. You're right. He's going to want an outside post. We all want outside posts and perfect trips with our horses. We'll see what happens with him. But I, I do think he has a big excuse. That does it for the first episode of Trips and Traps. We've got a few more races coming up. Once again, love to hear your thoughts. We've heard a lot of thoughts. And keep them coming. Trips and Traps at NairaInc.com. Thanks for watching. And come on back for the next episode.